Let's talk about it. Let's let's get in and uh let's let's talk about it right quick. What's good everybody and welcome back to the Lockout Men podcast show. And uh you know we just going to we're going to just jump right into it. So as I said before, I'm not going to go into any more issues or detail with people about what happened to the young man in Denver two years ago. As you guys already know, his sentence came down this past week. He was hit with 110 years in prison for four counts of, not sure what it is, but he, he, he was hit with some counts. Uh, as a trucker, as a trucker, I know that it was an accident. It was an unfortunate accident. Could have been avoided? Maybe. But we don't know whether or not if it if 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 it was or wasn't. We let me just put this here. We or I was not in the seat or the cab at the time of that young man's incident. All right, we're just gonna put that out there. So we don't know what was going through his mind, going through his spirit, or anything of that matter when it just happened. We can only go by what this young man has said in the interviews, and we can only go by what was being reported. Now, some is reporting different accounts of the incident of course there was video of of the young man going down the mountain via dash cam uh driving erratic speeding and all like that but as you already know if you lose your brakes you're going to increase in speed as it is uh a little bit a little bit more information that i was able to dig out uh the young man did call or was on a call with his company to let him know that or to let them know that the brakes went out and he's having a hard time stopping what to do, what to do, what to do. Pull the emergency brakes. Didn't work. Pull the Jake brakes. Didn't work. What to do, what to do, what to do. An accident happens. Unfortunately, in this particular accident, people had died, people got hurt, and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, equipment was was destroyed. So let's talk about the company. Let's let's talk about the company. No, nobody having touched on the company that this driver has worked for out of Houston, Texas. Are they still open? I'm still checking, but I really don't think that they are. I I think they probably have filed bankruptcy and left and left it to the wayside. The company Constello Constello 3 Trucking LLC out of Houston, Texas. This company only has five trucks and five drivers. Majority of them are foreigners. So the little bit of information, a little bit more information I was able to get about the company as I find out that the company has 19 vehicle inspections and over 30 violations in the past two years. So of course I was able to do some research, do some digging. And I came across this website called Quick Transport Solutions. Castello, Castillo, Ca. Castelio, Castelio, Teleno, Casteleno, Casteleno, 
There you go. So you gotta gotta pronounce it out, man. But O three Trucking. Their physical address is ninety one hundred Mills Row, apartment two o three, Houston, Texas seven seven zero seven seven. And if we was to bring this up on the map, it's an apartment complex. Now they a small mom and pop deal run that's ran out of the house. Probably a husband and wife team as the wife being the dispatcher. At the time it says number of trucks three, number of drivers three. But here's their reports though. Two violations, tires, coupling device. One violation, uh, windshield. Five violations, brakes, all other violations, brakes, all other violations, brakes, all other violations, brakes out of adjustment, brakes, all other violations. Two of them was repaired at the scene and it two violations right here breaks all other violations load securement oh, they had a violation on a load securement oh my god none here none here four violations emergency equipment all other drivers violations periodic inspections on both of these we got a total of two violations right here all other drivers violations all other vehicle defects none here none here we got three pages We got three right here, brakes, brakes and lighting. Three here, all other violations. Three here, brakes, lighting, brakes. Ease. We got one here, all other hours of service another hours of service none here none here three here breaks out of adjustments breaks all other violations emergency equipment failure to obey traffic control device A total of eight. Well, we got brakes out of adjustment, brakes out of adjustment, brakes out of adjustment, tires, tires, all other vehicle defects, brakes, all other violations, exhaust discharge. We got four. We got lighting, all other defects, brakes, load securement on this one, and then none. Over that period of time, three drivers was hit for having kinking in their brake tubes and their brakes out of adjustment respectfully. Exactly. Unfortunately, this company you know they they insurance there was a small company and they only and as far as their insurance go they was only the bare minimum uh this probably started out as an owner operator he wanted to get out there and what he did was got the bare minimum somebody suggests hey just get the bare minimum so you could just get started and then you could work your way up from there whatever the case the bare minimum being 70 
750K. That's it. That's all they got. That's all they took out. 750K. Now, is that going to be enough to cover the devastation that happened in Denver, Colorado, two years ago? We don't know. Of course, the company definitely filed bankruptcy, and they're letting the courts handle how they're going to distribute that 750K. Now, is everybody going to be happy in that settlement? I don't think so. You know, unfortunately, it ain't going to help because it's not going to bring none of their loved ones back. But 700K. Now, FMCSA was in, uh, was in, was doing, they was in effective trying to get the insurance raised to, you know, for small companies like that, raised to at least 10 million, at least, you know? So if something like that, which already has happened, the company are, or, are, or can or is able to cover the settlements. But this company, though, Costello, out of, let me see, out of Houston, Texas. Now, of course, this is two years ago. I, again, I don't believe that they are in existence anymore, considering the fact of what happened. You know, they just left that young man to, to drown. But here's the most interesting thing that I found out about this, uh, about this company. The young man that got 110 years, because I can't pronounce his name, so I'm just going to call him the young man. He was a, he was an immigrant originally from Cuba with a green card with limited English, you know, with limited English, reading, writing, and all that other good stuff. He wasn't able to understand. He wasn't able to understand some of the stuff that he, you know, he, he, that he's seen. So, you know, big ass sign that says, you know, truck ramp off ramp right there. Use that. Okay. Use that. Not a problem. Use that. Unfortunately, he didn't know better because maybe he didn't understand it, right? Being that he didn't understand it, he didn't know what it was. But there was another young man that actually worked for the company, Costello uh, 03 out of Houston. That young man that I come to find out, he was charge he had a citation he had a citation uh to have violated a rule requiring drivers to understand highway traffic signs and signals in the, the english language another violation says driver cannot read or speak the english language sufficiently to respond to officials inquiries wow so that goes to that that goes to tell me from what i have learned right there you know being that this company is small out of houston only five drivers i'm going to say you know maybe 50 percent of the drivers because they only have five so you figure 50 percent is like maybe two three including the young man that got 110 years couldn't read and or write in English. And see, this is the bigger problem right here. Foreigners coming over into the coming over into the states, driving without no without understanding none of the none, none of the signs out here. I came across a lot of them. A lot of them. You know. 
they be at the shippers and receivers, and they can't understand what the what the shipper and receiver tell them. They tell them what door to go into. They don't understand it. They they turn to you. They they turn to their fellow drivers and be like, "Yo, what she said? What he said? What this mean? What that means?" They had to look on their phones to translate because you know the phones now got that little translator. They have they have them to talk into. I seen it. I seen it. They have them to talk into the phones, right? And then it translate over into their native tongue. And then with that said, then they'll be able to understand it. What if they didn't have that type of technology now, right? How, what I need to know is how is it possible for foreigners and I, I and I think I can formulate an opinion to this. How is it possible for foreigners to come over, get their CDLs, get in this truck and drive without without knowing the English language? How is that possible? Well, they already have their CDLs from abroad. Then when they come over to the states, they just use a green card. We're going to be out of this place in 30 days. Not only that, but we got a green card and a job in Miami, man. Now what we made, or oh, are we made, man? What do we got to do? Go to Cuba and hit the beard or what? And they don't have to, you know, tr uh, get their new, C you know, transfer their new CDL over to the states because they using their green card to work. Just imagine if they have to do that. A lot of them, a lot of you guys, a lot of you foreign guys, you wouldn't be driving a truck. Y'all would y'all if y'all want to drive a truck, y'all have to get sent back to your to your native continent, country, whatever, and 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 drive over there. But that's how I see it though. I I I see, I I see that. When they get a green card to work, they come over here to the States with their drivers, with their CDL from abroad to use it over here in the States without having to get their new CDL license transferred over. Right? That's just a thought. Let me know in the comments below. Let, let me know what you guys think of how they're able to do that. I, I think that's that's their way in. But hopefully FM, uh, FMCSA, hopefully they will change all of that real soon. This like how they make this like after 9-11, they make it much more difficult for any and everybody to get a pilot's license. After the tragedy in Colorado, they should kind of make it a little bit more difficult for foreigners to get their license when they come over here. Or let me take that back. Should make it more difficult to drive with their already had commercial license when they get over here. Now, we already know that the FMCSA do require, all right? FMCSA federal requirements they do require drivers must be able to read and write English sufficiently enough to communicate with the general public to understand traffic signs signals in English and also to respond to officers inquiries and to make entries on reports and records. Unfortunately, the one driver that did work for Constetto 03 in Houston, Texas, he was hit with an unsafe driving violation and, and there was seven vehicle maintenance violations by the company again over the two year period. So this is the this is this is what I was able to find out about the company. If you haven't heard already, 
because I know a lot of you guys is just laser focused on the fact that the young man uh, did what he did. You guys is laser focused on that. Majority of you is laser focused on the sentencing, but a lot of you is not focused on the company. Now, I know a few of you have already said, well, yeah, maybe uh, the company should bear the responsibility. Yes. Yes, the company should bear the responsibility. And come to find out, this particular company did a half ass job with their PM. Over the past two years, you, you have violations just in breaks alone. So who's to say that the trailer that he was driving or, or the truck that he was driving wasn't even PM'd? The trailer brakes went out. They burnt out. They, they burnt out. And boom, that happens. Again, he was, you know, as you guys, as, as we said before, Number number two, he was inexperienced. He was only 23. He only had a green card. We're going to be out of this place in 30 days. Not only that, but we got a green card and a job in Miami, man. Now, what we made or are we made, man? What are we going to do? Go to Cuba and hit the beard or what? So it's, it's no telling how long he was even driving or, or if that was his first time driving. We don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying. OK, I'm just saying maybe that was his first time driving. And a lot of you guys is like really, really piling up on this young man. And, I, you know, again, like I said, I'm not going to I'm not going to talk too much about it. I'm not going to drill too much about it. What happened? What happened has happened. The sentence came down. Hopefully in the future, uh, drivers will take heed of this tragedy and 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 stay a little bit more focused on the road and a little bit a little bit more diligent on the company that you go with make sure that you study the companies that you go with here was a small mom and pops company no telling how long they was in business i mean for the last two years they had issues that's another thing that you shouldn't find out how often do they how often do they PM their trucks? Was there was there a was there is there any any people in safety that could have helped this guy out? We will never know because the company is never I mean, the company is not in business no more. But the company that he did drove for was Constello. Uh, Constello. Constellio 03 Trucking LLC out of Houston, Texas, which of course I don't believe is no longer in, in, in service. So ain't no telling what happened to the other four drivers. We know one of their drivers is hemmed up. And uh and they only has 750k for liability insurance. So that's it. That's it. Um, I hope you new guys that's coming into the industry, you know, take heed of what happened. You know, make sure that your that your truck and trailer is 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 all right to drive. Hopefully the company that you you research is a good company for you because it's all boils down to research. Research. Research that company. That, that that you thinking about driving for especially if it's a mom and pop company how long has they been in business how long has their trucks been pm has their trucks been in violation has their trucks been shut down by fmcsa find out all about that not just to come out here to chase the bag all right not to come out here to chase the bag come out here do the damn thing so that you, you won't be in the same situation as that young man. All right.
All right, this is Lockout Man. I really do appreciate you guys listening. Thank you very much. Yo, come back to me because this is where the best conversation starts over here on the Lockout Men podcast show. If you or anybody you know would like to come on and share stories, share rants, share anything that you want to share with me, reach out to me. The number is in the description below. Text the show and we'll get it in and chop it up. That's what we do over here. All right, the Lockout Man podcast show. Again, the best conversations starts over here on the Lockout Man podcast show. If you like what I'm doing over here, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. And if you like the video and if it's if it's valuable to you, make sure you hit that like button. It makes YouTube knows that you fucking with me. I am a YouTuber. I'm I'm not going nowhere. Until next time, everybody, y'all take it easy, and I will talk to you guys again later. Peace. We're going to be out of this place in 30 days. Not only that, but we got a green card and a job in Miami, man. Now, are we made or are we made, man? What do we got to do? Go to Cuba and hit the beard or what? <laughs>